everybody. It's Wednesday, July 6th. I saw something the other day and I thought it said July 15th. And I'm going, no way. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well, no, I don't know what I saw or whatever it was. But let me get down and find my people and their comments, which I love. Oh, I told John, there we go, Ireland. Oh, have I got something to say to you, Anne, in a few minutes about um, Katie Fowler. Uh, uh, just wait. So I hope for those of you in the U.S. that um, you sought to celebrate 4th of July in a way that made you feel comfortable. Um, what we ended up doing was, let me see, what do we have? What do, I don't even know what these pictures are. Oh, in the olden days, we used to have quite an extravaganza party to the point of um, a lot of Adair's friends came and we started doing this before babies were even born. In fact, at some of these parties, we would even be pointing it to somebody's tummy. I remember one year Adair had uh, Lennox, she was carrying her. And so this was back in the day. This is before COVID, and that was the ball pit. We had all sorts of really fun things to do. These kids, the parents, a lot of these parents went together, the mothers, to college together, and they have stayed together. Some really super fond memories. I think this might be the very first time Lennox even got to do a, a fire um, sparkler. Very, very careful with little kids. We had jumpy houses, you can see behind. We had swimming, blow up swimming pools with slides. We have, we back onto a school, we had motor cars and all that, and then COVID hit. <laughs> and so I remember there were a couple forests where, I mean, there was nothing. I mean, zero, okay? So um, up at the cabin, up at Pine Mountain Lake, they always have, the sparrow's eating a string, they always have a 4th of July extravaganza on Saturday. Whatever the Saturday is, it's closest to the 4th. And so we thought, you know, let's just go up to the cabin. Because also at our um, cabin, a new neighbor, well, new, she's been there five years, Claire, a school teacher, has moved in. And she is uniting the neighborhood. So there was going to be a block. There was a block party. And we said, let's, let's go up. Now comes the big question. Can Sparrow do a car ride and she did she, oh shoot yeah but she can't do lives okay john it's not working i'm in spiral okay <laughs> it's not working take her you got her okay heidi I'm having a really hard time. I oh, I call her Sparrow a lot because she looks so much like her. But anyway, she was so stressed out. Take a look at this. <laughs> she loved the cabin. The car ride was no big deal. Uh, we had her inside. We will not let her go outside. I did get her microchip. But you know what? Um, Sparrow always did want to go outside. This cat's not that interested. So, you know, it was not a big deal. Um, at the lake that day, they have a boat parade. They've got, um, I don't know what it's called, but the airplanes that are also boats. This one goes over and over and over and then lands on the lake. And then there's always a fabulous fireworks display. And so we had a very quiet time up there other than that, to hang out with the neighbors. And then on the 4th of July, I, we did nothing. I went next door with Dan. Um, the car man and had a beer with them and said cheers. <laughs> it was very non-eventful. So uh, what happened when we were up at the cabin, and we're going to get to Katie here in a few minutes. I'm, I don't even want to talk about it till we get there, okay? Um, when, we, when we were up at the cabin, D. Christopher, our D, our Saturday D, has just moved up to Sonora. And so I never, I mean, we never cross paths here it's always and i said i want to go to sonora for a day so it's kind of my artist date for myself so we went i met up with d we went out to lunch this really great little restaurant and then i went to her new home which i love i love everything about her house um, one of the coolest things is that the downstairs is kind of in a U shape 
And then the people that were there at some point before closed in that area, and it's a solarium. That's her art, that's her art studio. And then, oh, D, then she's got another room that's her quilt studio. The house feels so good, and I'm so excited for D. So congratulations, and thank you for keeping up with these lives while you're in the middle of moving. If anybody has moved recently, you know what a gift that is. Okay, so um, she said to me, I've got so many linens I don't know what to do with. <laughs> right? <laughs> so she let me pick through some linens. And I was like, oh, do I take this? Do I take that? Um, yeah, you know. So let me show you. These were some of the linens. Now, I, I'm going to show you something this close short of a miracle, all right? Uh, the white one with the embroidery looks pretty good. And she actually had a bunch of those, and I'm sure those were for a quilt or whatever. She hung on to some, and I, and I took this one. This has both pink and blue. Oh, look who's under the table, my, my buddy. Heidi Spotting, where's Waldo? But those top ones are just super grubby. I mean, but I knew this would work. So I went out to work and five fingered a bag of Retro Clean. We don't have a lot of it, but we have a little bit. And if we sell out, we'll get more. But what I did and what the instructions tell you is to put in three to four tablespoons for every gallon of warm to hot water. So water is precious here. I boiled water on the stove and uh, I poured it in, um, in one of those uh, Ace Hardware tubs, you know, like those five gals, gallons. And I probably only had two gallons in it. It's all you need to cover the stuff. And immediately the water started wicking up, pretty dirty, but as, as it suggests, I let it sit for about 24 hours. And I want to show you how they came out. I'm, oh, what I did was I, after the 24 hours, I wrung them out by hand, ran them under the kitchen sink. I don't want to put them in the washing machine because they are so fragile. As I pressed a couple of them this morning, I mean, there are holes and stuff. But let's go back and look at this picture again, okay? Now, look at this. Oh, you know what? I can, I can do better than that. I can scoot that this way and then hold this up. Look at that. Unbelievable. Unflippin' believable. Um, this one was pretty ratty. It's retro clean. All right. Uh, this was the first piece I saw, and I went, oh, I want this because the pink was so sweet. Cindy Needham's show is just fabulous, the latest one she did, and she shows us how to do little girls and stuff like that. Um, this one was one. Oop, everything's so opposite. And then I thought, well, I might layer this one on top and then do some fabulous quilting on it. Uh, it was this particular sample of mine that has me looking at these pieces a whole lot differently. But anyways, it's retro clean. Oh, one other thing, it's an absolute kick in the pants. And she she kept one of these. Have you guys ever heard of peekaboo? Is it called peekaboo aprons? I don't know. <laughs> Wait till you see this. Just when you think you've seen it all. Okay. See? Okay. It's my, my bib, right? Peekaboo! <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Maybe I'll wear this at the next 4th of July celebration if it ever happens again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Peekaboo. <laughs> and you know, the other thing is as Dee was going through, or I was going through the linens, um, she could say, well, Steve's, uh, stepmom made that or stepgrandma and this person made this and this person made this and as I was folding these for today and ironing the precision in them are just flipping amazing I mean just the way that the points and the circles are all in the same place okay um, Lori says I always thought that beige color was the original color mm -mm. amazing um, this stuff's amazing 
I have the one pound bag and I think it runs about 15 bucks and then there's one that's much smaller that runs five bucks. So maybe, you know, again, I, I think we only have a couple left in the store, but I know if we get out, we'll get more. Maybe the next time you order in the store, you just might want to throw it in if you're all interested in um, old linens, okay? Um, so here we go. On my way to Door County, Karen, Karen, Karen. <laughs> I wish I was going with you. If you go up to Ellison Bay, um, right before you dip down into Ellison Bay, there's a pottery um, store on the right-hand side before you dip down. That's where my mom was born. Mm -hmm. And then in Ellison Bay, there's the Pioneer Store. That's where my mom learned to roller skate. If you go to the clearing, that's where my mom and dad got married. And if you keep going up to the ferry, there's a road that goes like that. My grandpa did that road, and they did it like that so that people couldn't put phone lines. Okay, that's a little Door County history. I'm jail jail. Now I'm happy for you. I'm jail jail. Okay, so Katie Fowler. So Katie is going to take us down a journey following her down the rabbit hole. A lot of the things that Katie does parallels to what happened in um, Alice in Wonderland. I'm like, oh, brain fart. Um, and, but right now, I, I had a, I, when Katie and I recorded this, I had an epiphany. And I called her up and I said, Katie, I get it. I didn't get it up to now. And I've heard her talk about going down the rabbit hole and about obstacles, which is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I always thought the obstacles were people in your guild saying things to you. The obstacles equally, if not more, are things that you're saying to your own brain about your creative journey. And how Katie has put this together is amazing, okay? And that's why we call it going down the rabbit hole with Katie. So I called Katie to make sure that this versus the guild was correct. And guess where Katie is? Katie's in Ireland right now. And I got through. There she is um, kayaking in Kinsall. Doesn't that look like fun? And then uh, here she is kissing a famous stone, right? the Blarney Stone. So Katie will not be with us today, and that is just fine because she is getting herself rejuvenated by being in Ireland. But let's go take a look at what we did together. I can tell you right now we're going to be about five minutes over, but this is worth it. And it might be one of the things that you're going to want to watch more than once or twice, only because it took me that long to really have it sink in. So let's go to Katie too. Okay, Katie Fowler, we're, we're jumping into class two, which in a sense really is the first big lesson. And so I'm just going to hand you the podium. Um, and what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about creativity. And I called this part of the book, Yes, You Are an Art Quilter, If You Want to Be, because as a creativity coach, when I tell people what I do, you cannot believe how many people come up to me and say, I don't have a creative bone in my body. I can't draw a stick figure. And the reality is we're all creative. If you're a human being, you're creative. Well, let me stop. Let me stop and say this. You set your table for a holiday dinner. You are producing. You're creating. You cook dinner without all the ingredients, so you improvise. You, the simplest, best example is putting together a sentence, choosing the words to speak. That's uses the same part of the creative brain. So we don't want to limit creativity to being able to draw. Okay. There are a lot of people who can't draw, but we're all creative. Um, and, you know, I, art quilting, I don't, anyway, we talked about that in the last lesson. So you can make art quilts if you want to. Okay. But if you don't want to, don't. What I love about this book, though, is if you want to make art quilts and paint with my process, great. But it's by candy. C&T did such a beautiful oh. job, I think, putting it together. And there's a lot of information for 
everybody in it. You don't have to want to make marks on fabric to get a lot out of the book. All right. Okay, so there are little demons that come in your head, right? And that's right. And that's what we're going to go through now. And let's just see how many yeah. of us can relate to this, okay? Okay. I call them the creativity crushers because if you listen to them, they come in and crush your creativity party. See what I did there? Yeah. Alice in Wonderland, baby. <laughs> and um, then the next slide. So this one is the poser dozer. And this is like the imposter syndrome. You do not know what you are doing. This one hits me every time I speak at a guild and I always go after show and tell and people hold up these big, beautiful, perfect, traditional quilts and I'm gonna show mine. And I think, oh my God, they're gonna find out I have no idea what I'm doing. That so was me at Asilomar when we had to do our 10 minutes. It was the worst 10 minutes of my life because I'm looking at who's in the audience and I'm going, they should be teaching, not me. <laughs> so yeah, I can, I relate yeah. to that one, we'll check. <laughs> All right. Um, so then we have, oh, the bully bitch. She's my favorite only because we all know her. She stands with her hip cocked out to the side and probably has a posse of mean girls behind her. <laughs> she says, seriously? Like, you don't know what you're doing. You're not good enough to do this. Seriously. You're going to hold that up at, at the quilt guild? And oh. she's pretty mean. She's pretty mean. You know, and I wonder if that was more of a thing, say, 20 years ago than it is now. I don't know. I hope so. Okay. okay. I hope so. And then we have the fluke flinger. Sure, that was cool, but you can't do it again. I did a, a, I had a gallery show of my rock and roll quilts, and there were some pictorial quilts of the rock stars and then some representations of songs. We'll see some of them later in the class. People, a couple people cried when they read the artist statements. And I was so, I loved, that was really, really, really from my heart. I have, I love rock stars. And um, so even after I hung that show and looked around at it, the fluke flinger started going, yeah, this is neat, but you'll never do anything like that again. And remember everybody, this is your internal, this is your internal stuff that's going on. Although maybe one of them, you might actually put a name on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, we do know a few of them, maybe. <laughs> and then the last one is Doby Doubter. And I pictured, I named him Doby because if you read or watched Harry pa Potter, he's kind of like a house elf. Doby's really timid and just wants you to be safe. Oh, are, are you sure you want to use those bright colors? Are you sure you don't want to pull those big stitches out? Ooh, be careful. Be careful. So Dobie just wants to keep us safe. Okay. I love this. Yeah. All right. And so what we do about those creativity crushers is we just don't take them seriously. Yes. Yeah. I see you. I hear you. I know you're there. Go sit down. Go sit down in the back. The, I, um, I say that they're kind of like a kid in a car. You can't lock them in the trunk. But you can't let them drive either. And if we try and lock them in the trunk, they just pound and scream and get louder and louder and louder. So my feeling is you have to say, oh, hi, Dobie. Yeah, go sit down. I'm going to put you in your car seat. Love You're it. not in this car. So then um, I talk about in the big book or the new book, mm -hmm. Foolproof Art Quilting, and also the baby book, An Artist's Journey Through Wonderland, I talk about the big five. And um, the first one is perfectionism. And raise your hand if you've ever dealt with perfectionism. So I think the, per the perfectionism is like the Queen of Hearts, who in the Alice book runs around and screams. It was you on episode 1807, I'd like to remind you. Off with their heads! Off with their heads! And the playing cards are painting the white roses red so they don't get their heads cut off and my message about perfectionism is nobody gets their head cut off in the book the queen of hearts never cuts anybody's head off and if you are a white rose please be a white rose don't paint yourself red okay comparison is like a bad habit 
and I was visiting my sister last week in Connecticut, and she kept pointing out to me, it's not a comparison. It's not a comparison. So this is when we weigh ourselves against each other. And um, have you ever been sitting in a class and you look at the person next to you and you think, oh, mine looks like a four-year-old made it compared to hers? Most you know, happened. that happened to me in a Sally Collins class. I looked next door and my friend Joyce Moss was ahead of me, and I was so upset. I mean... You put your blinders on. Don't do that, people. Right. right. And then that then there's the uglier part where you're sitting in a class and you look next door and think, oh, hers looks like a four-year-old did it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to raise your hand. I've done that. Okay. But, um, what, what comparison is is an exchange of self-worth. And it's ridiculous because it's like a caucus race which I'm sure C.S. Lewis was talking about the political process, but in the book, they're all just running around in a circle and it's a race. There's no beginning, no ending, no winner, no loser. So you're just wasting all this energy for nothing. So when you catch yourself comparing, you know, how big your rear end is, what your hair looks like, how big your friend's house is, whatever it is, just stop. It's a bad habit. Catch yourself and just stop. Okay. The next one is resistance. And that's when we just cross our arms like a two-year-old and say, you can't make me. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I was talking to a woman, this is years ago, but she has <clears throat> these beautiful public art installations all over Denver. I mean, she's made it. She's an she's an artist. I remember when you were involved with that. I remember that. Well, yes, that was. I got to help on one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was talking about resistance, and she said, "Is that why I'd rather clean the washing machine than go into my studio?" And I said, "Oh, you're supposed to clean the washing machine." <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> we, resistance is when we just don't want to do it. And we all resist something, you know, mm -hmm. going for a walk. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad when I'm outside walking, but going out the front door is the hardest thing. Yep. So there are a couple things that we can do when we find ourselves resisting. And I call them the six impossible things for before breakfast because I have taken so much from the Alice books. Okay. Did I go ahead? Should I go back to that? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. It's, I talked about that. So go to the next one. Okay. Please. Okay. So there are six things that we can do to ourselves. Keep it simple. When we're in resistance, keep it simple. Maybe you iron fabric. Maybe you piece scraps. Just go into your sewing room. Um, keep it light. That's the balloon. Just don't take it so seriously. That's my message that you're probably going to hear over and over and over again is don't take it so seriously. We're doing this for fun. And then the third one is kick-ass rock star. Nope, I'm still back on the checkerboard. Oh, so, oh I'm sorry, sweetie. That's okay. Okay. So the third one is kick-ass rock star, and that's just keep, keep in your mind what you can do, what you're capable of. Then keep in touch. You know, reach out to a friend if you need to. Or if it's better for your creative process, close the door. And then uh, the last one, the little box of crayons is connect with your inner kid. Because when you're a child, we don't have, we don't have the creativity crushers. We don't face resistance. We don't, I mean, we do if our mother tells us to eat something we don't like, which in my case was salmon patties growing up. <laughs> Green <Crunchy. peas. laughs> oh, they're Horrible. Anyway. Um, just do what you need to do for you. You know, Joanne Sharp calls it, she, she taught all ages of grades in school and mm -hmm. she called it uh, the second grade art girl. Embrace the second grade art girl. Yes. Yeah. Before we, and there's that study that somebody did where they, at, they followed a class of kids from kindergarten to graduation and they asked the kindergarten class, raise your hand if you're an artist every hand went up and as the years went on by the time they graduated one hand oh, went up. I hear so you. I hear you. that's why I kind of hate 
hate and love to use the word artist because we're all artists. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's how we do things. You know, if we do something with our heart, which is our passion, our head, which is our knowledge, and our hands, which is our skill level, we're doing something with artistry, no matter what it is. Okay, let's talk about jam. Okay, that's procrastination. Sorry, I get going on this stuff. And no, because it's so fascinating, and you're really good at this, which is why we're doing this. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. So uh, the White Queen tells Alice, no, never jam today, jam tomorrow, jam yesterday, but never jam today. And I want to tell you to have your jam today. This is the procrastination. It, for whatever reason, I don't know why I procrastinate. I've That's been a years long trying to figure it out but I'm starting to have my jam today. I'm not waiting for tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and you know why you're procrastinating? Cause you got all the other things going on in your head. Well, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And Julia Cameron in, in the artist's way talks about morning pages, writing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I've started doing that again. It takes a long time. I didn't have time to do it this morning and my day hasn't been as nice as it has been when I make the time to do it. And you're exactly right. It's there's too much stuff bouncing too around. Too many around. demons. Okay. So have your jam today. All right. Do what you want to do today. And then the last one is creative chaos, which everyone faces at some point. Sometimes it's at the beginning. Sometimes it's in the middle. Sometimes it's at the end. But in Alice in Wonderland, um, Alice leaves before um, the cake in the, in the party. And you can go to the next little quilt, quiltlet. I'm here to tell you to push through the creative chaos and stay for the cake. Oh. She leaves um, before the cake, and then we can show the next two slides. Because the Mad Hatter asks her, how is a raven like a writing desk? And I have no idea. I guess it's just one slide. I have no idea how a raven is like a writing desk. But don't let something that silly stop you from doing what you love and sometimes you do have to in the worst well i don't know worse but in some cases of creative chaos i just have to put the project away mm -hmm. i have to get someplace where i can't see it and just let it percolate for a while and almost always when i pull it back out i'm like wow that was pretty good yeah but when i'm yeah. looking at it you know from an inch away for two weeks or whatever it's like looking at yourself on the camera when you're doing a webinar with Alice. <laughs> Every little thing that's wrong with your hair, your, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that happened in my Joanne Sharps class, uh, which is, you know, watercolor and all this kind of stuff. I'll do something and I'll go, ugh. And then I come back the next day and I go, well, that wasn't that bad, you know? So I think these are all exceedingly valuable things to consider. And if this is a new concept to you guys watching, I would go back and watch it again because I've heard Katie talk about this maybe three or four times and I heard different, I heard it differently this time than I have in the past. And I think it's when you're ready to bring in the information into your head, you know? So um, I would say this pretty much wraps up too, but I want to put up again, uh, all of that is in this book, okay? And and next week, yeah, the, the baby, we call it the baby book and the big book. The baby book is the Alice in Wonderland story. This encompasses everything. And then, of course, we have the foolproof color tool, which I think we're doing that... Next time, I think that's class three. Yes, um, it is. We sell them on the website individually, but if you purchase these two, um, we're gonna throw in the baby book, which is super valuable. And while it's a baby book, there's a lot to digest when you read it. And I think with what you've just said, Katie, it gives it even more depth and understanding. Well, and what I just went over, you know, at breakneck speed, I go into in depth. In yes, little... yes, yes. So Okay, so this this also is it. More in depth in this book, but it's really in depth in this book. Yes. Um, okay, so this is class two that we're completing, and the next class is going to be class three with color, 
And in that class, you're going to learn how this thing works and the results you get and how to look at the color wheel. Okay, guys, I want to put it out there right now. Many, many people teach color in many ways. This is a common sense. You can do this. It will work. So basically, Katie now has said, okay, guys, put on your big girl panties, go out, your big girl bathing suit, go out on the diving board and get ready to jump and swim. And the next couple classes are going to be, okay, let's start with the, bre the breast stroke. And we're going to go through the different strokes. You agree with that, Katie? Yeah, I think that's a great analogy. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. I will see you soon. And thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to share with us and teach us. Okay. Well, thank you, Alex. See you next time. Bye-bye. Isn't that great? <clears throat> uh, my wish is that every quilter could or artist could see that and i know there's a way to share this uh, via social media and you might want to do it on your feeds just because i just think all of us can identify with what katie said and i think it's just good to hear it and again in the beginning i thought it was a person in the guild and then all of a sudden this time's like boom it's me and when I called her, she said, well, yeah, it's a little bit of both, but mainly it's in here. So the next class, Susie, will be Monday at, at 10 o'clock Pacific time. Uh-oh, not a good look. Um, and it will be 10 o'clock and we're going to be dealing with the color wheel. I want to say a couple things. Uh, Camille, you brought up drawing that you're not good at it and that some people are just born with it and other people have to learn. Okay, in college, I had a drawing class like Drawing 101 and our assignment was to draw every single day, every day. And yeah, by the end, you could draw. It's practice, it's persistence. It's like when a new quilter looks at a big quilt and goes, I, you know, I, whoa. We all started somewhere. It's practice, practice, practice. Yes, there are people who are born with skills, but they still had to learn stuff. They had to learn design. They had to learn balance. They had to learn all of that. I don't think it's that innate. And that's the beauty of what we're going to be going through. Um, oh, my little buddy just came in here. Make sure that you uh, watch 1807 if you haven't already. It's a, it's a shocker. And I want to share one last thing before we go bye-bye. Uh, I meant to share it earlier. When we were at the block party um, up at the cabin, there was a 98-year-old woman there. Uh, I would have guessed she was in her early 80s. And she was completely there, all right, as adorable and wonderful as a person could be. She lives in a, um, uh, like an apartment place for seniors, but people who are completely, you know, can, you know, cook their own meal and all that kind of stuff. And probably like what we have in Livermore, which is heritage. And her purpose right now is this. Every night before she goes to bed, her daughter shared this with me. Every night before she goes to bed, she lays out what she's going to wear the next day, which let me tell you is spot on. She was dressed spot on. And then in the morning, she, I'm fighting a cat here. And then every morning, she goes around the complex and puts a doggy treat at every single door that has a dog. That really touched my heart. John told me after talking to her that she went back at age uh, 67, 66, 67, and got her psychology degree. And John said, did you ever have the chance to practice? And she said, not formally, but guess who everybody comes to at her complex. Mm -hmm. And so I, I look at this woman and the purpose of her life, and I look at how we are as creatives and the purpose of our life and the sharing and the giving and all of that. And for that, I say thank you because, yeah, I don't even know how I can tie those two things together, but that really is still with me. And speaking of sharing, on Friday, we're going to do some more show and tell. We haven't gone through all of them yet. I can't believe it. And this next round has some pretty poignant um, stories that go along with a lot of the pieces. So I don't know how that just happened. And then on the last note, my girlfriend Lois Johnson is coming here from Rochester, New York today. They're up in Grass Valley for a month, and she's going to come here, and we're going to hang out and play for a couple days. Excited. Uh, but I will be here Friday morning with show and tell. 
and then Katie's uh, class then will resume on Monday. Okay, that's Linda. Take a look at Mindset by Carol Dweck, PhD. She writes about fixed versus growth mindset. Wow, that's cool. All right, so please pass this on to people because I want them to see it and I want them to know we're going through this journey with her. I think there's a lot to be learned. And when we got done taping them all, my head was exploding, okay? So, I mean, I know I'm gonna have to go back and watch them a couple times. So, take care. I'll see you Friday, and I don't know what Lois and I are going to do. Hopefully not get in too much trouble. See ya.